What's up guys, CP Money here back with another video and today we're here with this month's PC build plan. This is a series of videos where we go ahead and put together theoretical PCs that you could build with all the stuff linked down below that you would need to actually go ahead and build them. This month's PC build plan is a 4K editing system but on a budget. Now 4K editing videos and creation of content in 4K and budget don't usually go in the same sentence but thanks to the launch of AMD's new gear, we can actually do a little bit more of a better budget build. So with that being said, let's jump into building our system. The first thing we're going to look at is our CPU. Now we picked up the Ryzen 7 1700 CPU running at 3 gigahertz with 8 cores and 16 threads and it is most importantly an unlocked CPU, meaning we can overclock it and get it up to the speeds roughly where the 1700X actually sits. So even though we're buying a lower end SKU, technically speaking we can do some overclocking and tweaks here and there to get much better performance out of this guy. Now with that being said, if we were going for rock solid stability, we could just leave it as 3 GHz as 3 GHz even as the base speed is still extremely fast and easy enough to go ahead and edit video with a lot of high end workstations still at that 3 GHz mark, so 4K video should be not too bad right there. On top of this, we're also to getting a massive 8 cores and 16 threads, which is really absolutely awesome for editing 4K video. Even 6 cores and 12 threads is decent for 4K video, but definitely 8 cores and 16 threads is going to be taking this to the next level and that is why the 1700 was chosen for this build. In terms of RAM we went ahead and picked up 32GB of Corsair Vengeance LED DDR4 RAM and whilst it is a fairly fancy kind of set of RAM for a budget system like this, at the end of the day I did still want to go ahead and have some sort of validation with the platform as the last thing you want to do is drop a whole bunch of money and have like RAM instability issues. So 32 gigs of Vengeance Corsair LED RAM was chosen for this build. Now 32 gigs may sound overkill as we are going for a budget but we do need to remember that this is 4k video we're talking about and it eats up RAM like there's no tomorrow. I mean just look at this screenshot from my editing system and all I'm really doing is just scrubbing through a timeline so 4k and RAM definitely go hand in hand. Now on top of this we could have saved some money and gone with some generic kind of crucial basic RAM but again we did want that validation with the AMD Ryzen system so I did go with something with a little bit more validation right there but if you did want to save some cash there are definitely a couple cheaper options you could pick from in this type of solution. Moving on to the motherboard, we grabbed ourselves the ASUS Prime B350M. We did a video about this guy which should be linked right up there or should be linked down below if I do get around to actually doing that. Overall it is a solid motherboard without all the excessive fluff that comes with more expensive and higher end motherboards. It delivers us all the connection we need, we've even got an M.2 slot so if we want to upgrade for a super fast caching drive we could even do that. But for overall this system it's going to get the job done and shouldn't be too much of an issue. Plenty of PCI Express connectivity if we want to do some add-in cards on top of our video card and again thanks to that M.2 slot down the road when we do get some more cash what we can do is grab a super fast NVMe drive chuck it in that slot and actually use it as a super fast caching drive which really sounds awesome. But speaking of storage let's jump over to our storage options. For storage today we grabbed ourselves the Samsung 850 EVO 500GB drive and two WD Blue 4TB drives. Now the 850 EVO was used not necessarily because it's the fastest drive on the market, in fact it's a little bit of an older drive at the moment, but thanks to its large capacity and low price tag that is the main reason why it was chosen because it's cheap and also too delivers a lot of capacity. We can do things like install all of our pro apps, so if you're using the Adobe Suite you can install just about mostly all of the Adobe Suite within 500 gigabytes and install Windows and if you are a bit of a gamer you could also do throw some games on this system as well without running out of storage on this C drive. On top of this if you're only really going to be using Premiere Pro and After Effects, what you can also do is set up a cache folder on this drive and have a really fast SSD caching with plenty of room for the operating system and drives on this guy, or rather, and software on this guy, and have no problems here. We also too picked up four terabyte drives, two of them in fact by the WD Blue series because they're just mass storage. I mean, WD Blue drives are perfect for this type of application plenty of storage, low cost and coming in around $150 it is actually a really good bargain. In fact it wasn't even a year ago you could not pick up a 4TB drive for less than $200. Now they're $150 each, they're not half that bad and because we are doing 4K we're going to be needing to grab ourselves a lot of storage especially if you plan on keeping some of the files around and trust me I burn through 4TB drives faster than a heavy smoker will burn through cigarettes in a single day. I fill up drives like there's no tomorrow 
and 4K definitely eats up that storage. So we grabbed two drives to start off with. If you are planning to do more, thanks to our motherboard being fairly decent on the connectivity, we could also to add a couple more drives internally. And also to if you wanted to run some external drives, you could or hook yourself up a HBA card and grab yourself some extra ports there. But overall, we'll have plenty of storage to start off with and definitely plenty of room to expand down the line. Now video card wise, I wanted to go ahead and get something that would accelerate our work fast, but we didn't necessarily need something like a 1080 or 1080 Ti due to the cost and not too much performance. Don't get me wrong, a 1080 Ti would absolutely smash through 4K in terms of CUDA acceleration, but we are on a budget, so we grabbed ourselves a GTX 1070 from MSI in their Duke lineup. Now, the Duke cards from MSI isn't necessarily something I would buy. However, at the moment, they're the same price as your typical Founders or Blower Edition cards. So I thought, why not get something with a better cooler, a little bit better and more beefy power delivery system, and overall just get a nicer looking card. So the GTX 1070 Duke card from MSI was selected for this build. Once again, it's gonna be running more as an accelerator card and as someone who still runs GTX GTX 660s on a 4K editing system is pretty much okay here. So the 1070 should do you just fine for when it comes to editing your 4K content. But with a single 1070, we could either upgrade to another 1070 down the road, or we could grab ourselves a 1080 or 1080 Ti later down, or even just the next gen of cards when they do come out. So there's definitely a lot of expandability and also to upgradeability with this particular system when it does come to down the line. Now in terms of case, we grabbed ourselves something that was pretty simple, which was the Cooler Master N200. It's a simple, decent little box with decent cooling and overall is just a nice little package and coming in around $50, it's also too not too bad on the wallet. You may also too that note that there is no window on this guy so we don't necessarily need to go out and buy fancy LED stuff and RGB here and there. It's gonna be in the box with no windows so it doesn't exactly really matter what the internals look like, hence why there's no real color coordination or anything like that with today's particular build. In terms of power supply, we grabbed ourselves the EVGA Supernova 650 watt power supply which should be plenty enough for this system with a bit of headroom for some overclocking or future drive upgrades or future video card upgrades and overall it does a fairly good job there. And finally, we'll grab ourselves a copy of Windows as that is sort of what we do need to run if we want to actually do any content creation. And the total cost of this build comes around to $2,000 or around that mark right there, which isn't actually too bad for a 4K editing system. In fact, it wasn't too long ago that you couldn't buy a 4K camera for less than a $4,000 price tag and you couldn't get a system that could edit 4K video smoothly for less than $4,000. Now we've got cameras for less than $2,000 and we've got computers that are less than $2,000 that could easily handle 4K video. This guy should work just fine for long render times and do a boss job when it comes to smashing through 4K content. So whether you're editing up 4K YouTube videos just like me right now, or you're gonna be going ahead and doing some other cool little projects right there, this system should do you just fine. Hey, and even if you're a gamer as well, this thing should also do smash through games thanks to the eight core CPU and the GTX 1070 and plenty of RAM we threw at this system. Overall, a very nice system based on the Ryzen platform and I have to say, I would definitely love to build this system if I did have the chance. As Ryzen is also to getting more and more stable, this box will also to get better and better as time goes on, much like what we saw on the X99 platform. It started off a little bit shaky, but by the end of its lifespan, it was extremely solid. And I have to say, uh, Ryzen should get the exact same treatment. Might be a little bit shaky at the start, but definitely will be an extremely solid platform to jump onto once we do have a little bit of time passing. But let me know what you think of this build down in that comment sections. If you're into 4K editing, let me know what you think of it as well, and would you build something similar, or what would you change out if you were to build this system? Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.